questions I'd like to ask are, in Africa, how do post-colonial countries incorporate tradition into the films that they make? And is there a market for conventional African-made films in the West? I don't have answers to these, but I'm looking for your opinions. I'll be looking at decoding Tuki Buki, which is the Wolof word for journey of the hyena, by Jibril Diop Mambeti from Senegal. Mambeti died in hospital in Paris in 1998 whilst he was being treated for lung cancer. <clears throat> Other films by Mambeti include Hyenas, Le Franc, Bedwoid Boy, The Girl That Sold the Sun, and A City of Contrasts. To understand Tukibuki, we need to understand Senegal. Senegal has 36 languages, but has not been able to shake off French as its official language. Over 80% speak and communicate in Wolof. A much smaller percentage speak French as we know it. Now, Senegal, <coughs> as a gateway to Africa, was a former French colony, which became a sovereign state in 1960. Society historically was organised into a hierarchy of castes, a rigid structure in which descendants of royal lines and nobles ruled over artisan castes and slaves. After independence, a new set of status criteria emerged. New means for achieving wealth, power and status were introduced through the market economy and the development of the educational system. Modern elites include successful businessmen, managers and professionals in the private sector, as well as influential politicians and highly educated individuals. Out of 188 countries ranked using the Human Development Index, it comes in at 162. During the colonial era, nearly all the profits generated by the largest firms went to foreign and local nobility. The nationalisation programmes led by the government after independence still favoured a small number of citizens who entered into a new competition for status and power. Corruption has contributed to the growing gap between the elites and the masses who are struggling to survive. A lack of contraception has meant a youthful population. A lack of education and price fix fixing, particularly on agricultural exports, has hindered the economic development of Senegal. Senegal is a moderately decentralised republic, dominated by a strong presidency. Called the Poet President, Senghor was elected in 1960. As a student during the Depression years in Paris, he wrote poetry that helped launch the concept of negritude. Inspired by the romantic visions of Africa, of Harlem Renaissance authors and European ethnographers, Senghor exalted African culture. During his reign, the arts were well funded. He organised the Festival of Negro Arts in Dakar in 1966, and he contributed to the founding of the Organisation of African Unity. Now, although a practising Roman Catholic, Senghor developed strong ties with the Muslim brotherhoods who supported him. Some Senghalese respected and revered him as the father of the nation, even though they did not share his political views. Unlike most African leaders, he knew when and how to give up power. However, by establishing a de facto one-party system, he contributed to the decline of the party's diamondism and thwarted the development of an opposition that could openly challenge national policies that had failed to stem economic decline. The army was demonstrated... <clears throat> The army has demonstrated a firm commitment to civilian rule and loyalty to the regime in power. Diouf continued Senghor's policy of building up the army and using it as an instrument of foreign policy. The military forces number about 15,000 and are among the best trained in Africa. Now, Senegal is a land of traditions and its people share a strong sense of national identity deeply rooted in Theosan, which means history, tradition and culture. Since the first... Uh, World Festival of Negro Arts in Dakar in 1966, institutions have been created or reorientated towards African traditions, including the Fundamental Institute for Black Africa. Post colonization, the population is far from being black Frenchmen culturally. The nation's pre colonial traditions and long colonial history have helped forge a strong sense of national identity among the majority of people. For Mambeti, film is something personal, stories told from where you live. Pour faire du cinéma, 
C'est simple. Il faut fermer les yeux. Est-ce que vous avez fermé les yeux Alors vous fermez les yeux. Vous voyez des, des points de lumière. Et puis, on ouvre les yeux. On a une histoire. Tuki Buki tells a story of Maury and Anta that are disillusioned with the prospect of living in Senegal and plan to leave Maury's debts behind and raise money to reach France on a cruise liner. They live in a shanty town where the informal economy is how they make their money, Anta going to university nearby. She has meetings with a group of wealthy pseudo-revolutionaries. Throughout the film, which is experimental in place and jumps in and out of sequence, there's a strong representation of cattle which are reared up and slaughtered at the beginning of the film and referenced throughout. Is it Maury that we see riding the cattle at the beginning? Now Maury has a skull on the front of his bike. The skull is removed from the bike during an intimate scene with Anta, as well as when the revolutionaries tie him to the back of a red 4x4 and parade him around town. The skull perhaps represents the future of people of Senegal. Now Maury never gets to leave Senegal, as chooses not to, running towards the broken bike where he holds the shattered skull and is told, recognize it, it was a handsome beast. Now perhaps it was Maury that was the handsome beast. He had tremendous opportunities in Senegal. Now sat in the middle of some steps leading up to the city and down to the coast, wearing clothes that represent the person Maury wants to be but clearly is not, the viewer is left to reflect what choices they have in a new emerging Senegal. The postman that we see delivering letters to the residents of the shanty town at the beginning walks past Maury on the steps, a signifier that life still goes on perhaps. Now further viewing, the 2015 film Incorruptible is a documentary. It tells of the spring of 2011 in Senegal, which was pitched into crisis when President Abu Laid Wade decided to change the constitution to allow him to have a third term in office. Now the youth of that country voiced opinion and the term was not allowed, evidence in the stability of Senegal and the future for its young people. Again, questions I'd like to ask. In Africa, how do post-colonial countries incorporate tradition into the films they make? And is there a market for conventional African-made films in the West? Again, I don't have these answers, but I'm looking for your opinions. Thank you.